Uh, I'm, this is um, Federico. I'm here at Bergen, Bergen Belzim. Uh, I'm about to take a tour of the uh, of this place. It has a lot of history, and you know they also made a movie about it, uh, Anna Anna Frank. And hey, yeah, we're about to take a tour and take a look at things. To enter into um, the memorial uh, museum part and take a look at some things and see how things kind of went back in history and we're entering now into Bergen Basem uh, Memorial. A big flag picture because there I can tell you some about the place here, okay. the beginnings and how it works. Okay. So you have here a big picture, that is a flag picture and the black white mm -hmm. is the original of September 44. The color one is like today. Today, okay. So, the place here will start with um, 1940. It starts here with some barracks mm -hmm. for workers. Yes. They build the military base mm -hmm. and the training area. Yes, got it. Then it changed to um, prisoners. In the exhibition you have six topographical maps I show you on the on the other map Mother where okay. you see it exactly and how you see the parts they get bigger they, they build change. The area, it change how inside. Change. Okay. This is now the place mm -hmm. of Bergen Belsen. Yes. And that were two um, areas. One of the area was the POW camp mm -hmm. at this area. Yes. This is a main street and this year was a part of the concentration camp area. Yeah. So the part of the prisoners of war was from 1944 to 1945. 45. And on the time for 1943 to 1945 was the part of the concentration, concentration camp. camp. So both in one. Mm. Um, yeah, the military base mm -hmm. is still now a military base. Yes, now I, I hear that. <laughs> now, yes, you hear the guns are in the outside, yeah. And it's one of the biggest NATO training areas here. Oh. So that is what you hear. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> um, yes, um, most of the people, they have to live on this area. Mm -hmm. In the upper, in color one, was the town of Bergen. Down under in black white. Yes. This is a loading ram. A loading ram. Yes. Ah. Oh. This is a military loading ram. Mm -hmm. But there steps the trains, and the most of the people have to walk still to here. Oh. It was a six kilometer. Wow. On June the 22nd, 1941, the Nazi German attacked the Soviet Union. Both Germany political leaderships and the countries and armies in the warfare referred to this campaign as the struggle of annihilation. Their plans included the destruction of the Soviet states and the countries and economic exploitation. Ultimately, the German government was planning to murder all Jewish inhabitants of the Soviet Union and reduce the, the rest of the population to slavery or starve them to death. We're here looking at um, photos now of what at one point were uh, um, a farmer worker for the um, for the camp. You also had students of the camp, and these are like original photos and original, um, as we would call it, identification cards to identify uh, the workers and the students that were a part of this. And yeah, here we have it. It's like all original copies, original photos, and you know, telling uh, more of the information on what they did um, during this um, hardship time. Uh, okay, here we have the wall, uh, and in the summer of 1941, the bergen belsen Albrecht and Wiedendorf camp consists of only a flat expansion surrounded by watchtowers and barbed wire. Only the huts for the camp's administrator had been finished. The construction of the huts for the prisoners progressed very slowly. 
The prisoners, therefore, had to spend most of their times in the open. In order to protect themselves from the elements, they began to dig the earthwork, then make, you know, legends from wood and sod. Some of them had a live in these provisional shelters well into the winter. Many prisoners died when their dens collapsed. And, you know, here are the photos uh, where it looks like was some people were actually living in, yeah, up under the ground. They had like little huts um, built in what we would call tents. And a lot of people died during this time because it was very cold. Um, the winters were very, very cold. And yeah, this was a really hard time. Okay, um, here's some photos of uh, some prisoners of war where um, one series is kept in the U.S. National Archives in Washington, D.C. A U.S. soldier was found them in April 1945 at the House of Farm, S., which they had requested the temporary quarters. When asked about the photographs, S. said that they had served with one of the um, territory units in Burgess, Belgium. POW camp in 1941, but like other members of the guard squad, had received the photographs in the mail from an unknown sender after his transfer. The second series of photogra photographs is privately owned. The granddaughter of a farmer, F, claimed that somebody secretly put them into her farm mailbox in 1942. It is also not known who distributed photos, photographs, or what motivated um, the motive was behind this distributing of these photographs. And here are the photographs that were um, privately sent to someone's mailbox in 1941, uh, 1942. Um, and a lot of these photographs are actually held in Washington, D.C. right now, as, as we see here. That's what they said, the U.S. National Archives in Washington, D.C. Um, a lot of these photographs were sent there. To have your own perspective of it and to be here and witness it on your own is really, you know, you get more out of it, you get a better understanding. I can explain it better than me just talking about it and watching it out of Frank movie and just seeing it, because it's just a movie when you just look at it to me on TV. But now, to be here, to get the full feel for it, you know, it's, it's just better. So we're gonna take a look and see, who knows? Different perspectives, so it, it may be. Are you ready? Uh, here is um, a wall in the photos of POWs from the Polish uh, during the Warsaw Uprising. And they're all ladies, I see. They have their, their name, um, well, they have their ID cards. And they, these were all POW ladies from the Polish. Back in um, these pictures, photos were taken in October the 10th. 1944. So um, we've been to Dresden two days ago, and there was a church which was bombed, and then the the wall was picked by hands, and then it was put on the wall again. And people come to this church every morning, and then they put candles and flowers for the victims of the war. Inside uh, here, as you can see, they had um, not really gravesites. They just dug up a huge ditch, and they just. As you can see, they pile people up on the on the on the trailers, and they just throw them in a hole. Like no burial, proper burial site. They just pile them up and throw them in a hole and cover them up, like it was just trash or something. And really, really bad, man. It was really, really, really rough time. I mean, it's, this is a situation of a. Uh, if you don't really know your history, on 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 no sides of, of any culture, then you probably you know instead of looking at the internet or maybe reading books, you probably want to if you ever have a chance to take the you know take the opportunity to go and visit some of these places for yourself and you get the real true you know feeling and and and, and, 
and better understand it for yourself than to just read about it and just watch a movie because this was was a really really rough time for this 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 culture that was that they, you know they had coming up uh, during this time it was so normal to see death to where people would just you know pick up a person that was you know deceased and like it was paper or something and they would just throw them in a hole and it was no problem for them to pick them up and drag them or a kid or a lady or a guy just pick them up like it was trash and just throw them in a hole like it was it was just really a rough time you know the people had to they had to dig they had to dig um, their self little holes to sleep in with, with spoons they would take a spoon and dig in the ground until they dig them a deep enough hole to lay in during the winter, during the whatever time, they were starving. There was no food. They were eating um, grass. They were eating belts, like belts off of the guards. They were eating the barks off of trees because they were just starving. And at times, if, if, if in that little hole they dug with a spoon, if one got sick in that little hole, then the military would just come and trample the whole little hole down with everybody inside, pretty much bury the people alive if someone got sick. So now with me getting a better understanding, you know, from the point where to where we're at right now is that I only thought that most of this happened to the Jewish people. But I see there were people from other places as well. Like I mean, you had a you had Italian people, you had Polish people, you had different people from different um, places that were also a part of this, that got put into this POW camp and went through this. But my understanding at the beginning, it was only certain people, it was only Jewish people, that was the only ones that I thought, the only one that I knew, that I knew, but to know now, to be here, to get the information, it was, there, were other, there were other people involved. They also were students. These um, here, we're standing um, over, some of the things that they used to actually um, dig the the huts that they lived in up on the ground, like some of the spoons that you that they found out, and the little knives that they found to dig in the ground, as well as keys that they had them where they had them locked behind. But these are some of the th artifacts that they used to actually dig in the ground and dig their huts to live up on the ground. We're about to uh, go and um, take a look at the cemetery sites of the historical camp. So we're gonna take a walk outside uh, to take a look at the cemeteries. Here we are today on the grounds of, uh, most of you all probably will know it as, as seen the movie uh, called Anna Frank. Uh, here we are today on the grounds of Burgess Belsum and here I am standing on the grounds where the movie Anna Frank and a lot of that stuff really took place. So I'm actually here, we're walking now you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff that's taking place right here where we're standing. But, you know, here I am live getting it, witnessing it for myself. Not something that I just saw in a movie like I, I you know, I'm trying to explain to everyone. I'm actually here and on the ground right now. We're walking it and we're about to go take a look at the, you know, more of the cemetery um, sites. And man, it's just, it's just a big culture shock and you get a chance to really see your history and it, it, it's something to come and take a look for yourself and you you know you'll get a better perspective of it it is a very very um tight warm feeling because you kind of see you wasn't there but you kind of see now you know what these people really went through and to see how right now even their culture of um say the polish people the italian people the the Jewish people per se, how they really, they take this, it's not that we think they take it serious, it really is serious because it really happened. The same way as African Americans, slavery, we take that very serious because it's, it, it really happened and it wasn't a good time, you know, for the ancestors and the people that happened, you know, back then. Only thing we can do is think about it now and it don't affect us as much because we, 
really didn't go through what they went through from this culture to the slavery to other stuff. But to see it and get a better understanding of your history, it means so much more to you. Okay, we're here standing right now. Um, as you can see, this actually could have been one of the places where when the bodies were, you know, the people were deceased, they just tossed them, tossed them in and they buried them deep into the ground. And this is like one of the um, cemetery areas right now. As you can see, it's kind of open, you know, but they, they tossed them just into the hole and, and buried them. And as time has went by, you know, they have, it, they have you know, kind of dug itself up. But, you know, here's one of the places where the burial sites took place, the cemetery. It says in uh, April 1943, this intersection passed from the Viermark to the SS and the concentration camp administration was housed there. Some of these facilities, like disinfection buildings, were then also used by both camps. During the last months before the liberation, when the concentration camp was completely overcrowded, some of the huts in the administration section were also used to house prisoners from the Hungarian camps. Uh. Here we um, stand on, this was the men's camp, and I think here is where they had the, um, like 520 men uh, who had to build the camp. I actually lie up on the here. You know, I'm pretty sure they, they have the count at 520, but the count could vary, could be more. You know, could be less, but it could be more. But as of the knowing, know that it, it, it was. 520 men lay here under this um, what we would consider a tombstone. Here we uh, stand at, it, it looks more like um, where buildings, where there actually were buildings, uh, camps, housing maybe that have been um, torn down and maybe bombed in the mix of things. And here you should see the slab, slab that are laid and who knows it also could have been burial sites but as of now it looks more like slabs to where the buildings were standing and they were you know bombed or taken down but here is the foundations that are left behind um actually i was wrong this is not where the housing was this is actually where the the water reservoirs for the food depots were where actually we um, they kept water for when uh, places got bombed or some caught on fire, they drew water out of this to put out the fires. So this is where they drained the water from for any fires that broke out close to the food depot or you know anything that caught on fire. They used these um, reservoirs and they drained the water out of them. Okay, um, here we stand where we're standing along where they had. Um, huts up to uh, like 196 to 205 little huts that they had built for well they didn't build where they dug them with the spoons and dug up under the ground and then they had places where they housed I think they brought people more from the the Polish they brought them here during this time in this area and this is where they were housed that you know because they had started to get so overcrowded and a lot of the soldiers were left behind because they were sick, you know, approximately like 800 soldiers were left behind. You know, they were sick during that time, and they had to separate them. You know, it was 300 and, well, 3,500 um, civilians from the Warsaw Uprising. You know, they had, so they brought them out here, and this area is where they were um, held. I'm Anna Frank and I'm walking here now and I'm actually on the grounds of the place uh, Burgers Belsen where um, they had the, the movie Anna Frank they shot most of it and I'm here walking taking a tour of it now and just kind of you know getting more information and you know here along in Germany down here in Berkes, Belgium, and this is where, you know, a lot of it took place. If you ever, guys ever get a chance to see the movie, 
Anna Frank, take a look at it and you'll see like this is where I'm at, like walking the grounds right now as we speak. Here I am standing uh, along the wall of the monument uh, that was built here for the memorial of the people during the time, you know, that were here and all the rough time that was going on. But here is the huge wall that they have made um, to honor these, to honor the people and their family and heritages of the time of this um, rough era. And. Here we are guys and take a look at it and people come out and they put you know the rocks or the flowers or the candles and honor honor the people and history of during these times. Here we are. Have a look. Here we stand um on this spot where the a lot of the survivors made a um, a cross here to honor the um, the children and women and men that were killed, uh, they made it. This 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 cross is made out of birch wood, and on April the 16th, 1945, um, this cross was made out of birch wood, and here is um, more of a more of a understanding of it to tell you more about it on what took place. I think they have like a, a memorial to just for people to come in and actually um, place an artifact down to just um, remembrance of the time. You know, people are saying God bless and, you know, just, you know, wishing these people, you know, the best, uh, you know, for the culture. It just was hard times. So people kind of left artifacts down just to show their you know their concerns and their and their feeling they express their feelings on actually being here and learning the history to just say that man you know this is a vigilant i mean for what what was a really really hard time and people come and they sit in and probably pray and they take their times and light candles and say their peace right here in this place right here this ground a lot of tragic things took place on this ground, on these grounds that we're standing on now, and you know we wanted to make sure that when we come into this memorial service, that your your, your soul and your body's clean because there are a lot of spirits, there are a lot of souls that are resting upon us here, and a lot of bad things happen here at these places, and people were here to show their respect and they leave the artifact down for here. Here we stand at a memorial site right here where, you know, as you say, Israel and the world, world shall remember 13,000 Jews exterminated in, in this concentration camp of the Bergen Belsum at the hands of the murderers, the Nazis. Earth's Council, not the blood shed on the First anniversary of liberation, 15th, 8th or 15th, 1946. 
14th Nissan, Central Jewish Committee, British Zone. But here is a, a memorial site, as you can see, guys, and like you said, over 13,000 Jewish people killed at this concentration camp by the Nazis. Man, it was it was a rough time, and and we're like I said, we're walking the grounds of what really took place, and this here are the grounds that we're standing on, that actual grave sites where this actual took actually took place and this is not something that I'm making up we're actually living it right now as we speak we're walking the grounds and giving you guys a better view of it you know of the grave the grave sites you see the background of the um, the memorial stones that were built here but like you say over 13,000 Jewish people were murdered right here on these grounds that we're standing on Uh, when we first entered into um, the Burgers Builders and coming into here, as now we're walking on the grounds of what we can, what is I consider part of uh, the history um, that took place. But there are also buildings that when we first came in, I actually think were used during the time of uh, this 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 horrible situation, this horrible time. There were buildings that were used, and maybe we'll get a chance to get uh, uh, pictures, photos of them, or video, and let you guys see as well. Let you guys know that this this 2,500 uh, tuta tute is meaning 2,500 people dead and uh, buried uh, right here, um, and where we stand in front of right here. This is what this is. This is where they um, dug the holes, and they just dumped the bodies in at times people they would drag the bodies and just um, dump them over in the middle of this here and then they would cover them up with the dirt it had gotten so horrific with the bodies being body counts being so many people they started to take bulldozers and just push the bodies into this this hole and then they would cover it up i, I saw it with my well, i didn't see it back then but i had video of the bulldozers pushing the bodies over Kids, women, men, pushing them open to this hole right here and just covering them up. No, in no order, no burial, just dumping them into the hole and covering them with the dirt. Okay guys, here we go. We're on the way out of the place and, but here we go. Here is the place, Bergesbergism, 1940 to 1945. Um, this is actually, uh, Part of the entrance, or either you could have entered in the other way. We entered in the, uh, the opposite side, but we're here, guys. This is the place, and as you all see, the land. What we're walking on right now is we're walking on the, the grounds of a really, really hard time that took place right here on these grounds. And I'm here just showing my respect and getting a better knowledge of some of the stuff that took place here. We're exiting uh, Burgers Belton, uh, where they shot the movie on a flight. We're exiting now. Uh, we just took a tour of the place and we're actually leaving the grounds. But it was really great to visit this place to kind of get more of the history and, and have a better knowledge. Okay, goodbye.